President, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. So, sir, we're, we're surprised to see you among Africans. You're surprised? <laughs> yes. So, Why are you surprised to see me amongst Africans after yeah. all? That's all I want to learn from you what attracted you to come to African event. Well, first of all, first, first things first, I'm from Puerto Rico. And as we are, and as we are taught uh, as Puerto Ricans, we are a mixture of different cultures. And the African culture plays incredibly large in, in Puerto Rican culture. Uh, in its music and its food, uh, certainly in our, and I'm very pale, but there's, but my father is just a little bit lighter than you are. So we have, we have uh, culturally and ethnically, we're certainly very much uh, a part of Africa. We are part of the extended African diaspora. And then on top of that, uh, and to me it's incredibly important, when you're talking about the work that I do in the Bronx as a state senator for the 33rd district in the Northwest Bronx, there are many, many people of African descent that live in my district. Uh, my, I have one of my staffers who is half Ghanaian, half Nigerian. And we have uh, folks from Ivory Coast and from Ghana and from Nigeria and from many other places around Africa that live in my district and make uh, the Bronx what it is, a diverse and beautiful place. So the reason I'm here today is to do that, to celebrate the diversity of our borough, uh, and to celebrate the, the beauty of African culture. That's right. So what do you learn, because I'm surprised, again, once more, to learn that you know so many countries from Africa. Because many people think Africa is a country. Yes. But for you, you know that the countries... I know, Africa. yes, I know there's many countries in Africa. I cannot name all of them, but yeah. whether, you know... <laughs> 52, I couldn't go that far. I could probably do 15 or 20, to be completely honest. Um, and, and I must admit that my, uh, that my knowledge about African geography is also limited, uh, but I recognize that I need to learn more, particularly because there's so many people from all these from different parts of Africa uh, that are coming to live in New York City, that are coming to live in the Bronx. And so it is part of my responsibility to learn more about who these folks are, where they come from, uh, and, and make sure that they know that we, that not only are you all welcome, but that I recognize that without the diversity that folks like yourself bring, uh, we wouldn't be the great city that we are. Okay, Senator, let us talk about the events. Yes. So, is this event of course, a special meaning for you? Well, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for, for people to see, uh, obviously film is, is something that is uh, an art form that is, is a universal art form. Everybody goes to the movies. And it is very important to see kind of how a particular community chooses to portray itself in a film. So seeing uh, different uh, short films or long films from, from different African countries and from uh, an African perspective gives us a sense of who, how, you vision, how you envision yourselves, how do you, how do you choose to portray yourselves, and therefore we, lead to, we learn a little bit more about your culture, about who you are as a people. And in most cases, people try to mingle, to bring together during a cultural event. So, uh, Senator, do you think African culture has made some impact in your uh, district? So I certainly do. I certainly do. We have, because one of the great things about, uh, you know, as many, uh, I, I think that our country is a beautiful country, and I think that our state and our city and our borough is a beautiful borough. And the reason I think that, and one of the main reasons that I think it's such a beautiful place to live and to work is because we know that we become better when we accept and embrace folks that are not like us. Awesome. You know, so, we, so when it comes to, to African culture, whether, again, whether it's the music, whether it's the dancing, whether it's the clothing, whether it's the food, uh, or whether it's the film, and all these things, it helps you to... When, when, I, when I look at it, when I see it, when I experience it, it helps me learn a little bit more about the countries that you're from and the uh, different communities that you represent. And I recognize that it makes us better as a borough, as a city, and as a country. Uh, and particularly when you have, you know, dumb people like Donald Trump talking about, <laughs> talking about how we're going to bar people from coming into this country. It is, it is, it is ridiculous, laughable, somewhat scary. But, but you know what? You know what's great about him and his stupidity? What's great about him and his stupidity is that it'll energize people that believe the total opposite of what he does. It'll make people like yourself, like this lady, like myself, feel more energized to get involved in the, pro in the political process to make sure that such a dumb human doesn't take over the reins of this country. Now, uh, before I let you go, yes, Senator, sir. 
let us talk about uh, African Advisory Council. Yes. Is this organization a concern impact in your district and uh, what do you think about it for its prosperity? Well, first of all, I thank the borough president for having the presence of mind to say this is a growing community in my district and it is not just, as you very well stated, Africa is not one place. Africa is a continent that has many countries, many cultures, many peoples, and, all, and many of these folks are coming to our to our to our neighbor, becoming our neighbors. So he had the presence of mind to say, we got to bring, uh, we got to put an advisory committee together, a group of people that are leaders in those in the different communities, so that they can advise him and us in government about the needs and the realities of these communities. So it is uh, very much a, uh, it is a solid idea, uh, and I have, you know and I look forward to its growth and to its development over the years and to working along with them uh, and anything that I can to help them uh, not only as, a, as an advisory committee become stronger, but their individual communities that they come from to become stronger and better uh, better immersed in who we are as a promise. Okay, so again, the last word about the forthcoming elections, because you started with Donald yes, Trump already. The last, the, the last word on the <laughs> upcoming election is Donald Trump is an idiot. <laughs> who represents the worst parts of this country, and you, my friend, represent the best of this country. Okay, so in last words to Africans, who are in your borough and... Uh, who are in my borough, well, thank you. I, 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 I will say to welcome. You. Welcome to, to, to the U.S., welcome to the Bronx. Uh, if this is Watch the Bronx, welcome to the Bronx. Uh, we we uh, open our arms to you. We thank you for being here. Thank you for making us a little bit better. And uh, keep... Uh, and keep up the, the great work in making your communities better every single day because when you do, you make the Bronx better in New York. Okay, thank you, Senator. It's my pleasure. Okay, thank you. Kashimich is uh, one of the organizers and um, she has got um, a film which she produced. So what's it about? Well actually I am uh, one of the, yes, um, I am actually being featured in this documentary. It's called The Ultimate New York Hustle and um, it's based on one of my experiences um, that I had as a pedicab driver here in the city. Um, I did that for about three and a half years and um, it was my means to you know survive. Um, and so we did a, a documentary on it. Okay, and uh, what is so attractive in that? And that, what prompted you to come up with such an idea? Well, to be honest, I didn't decide to do a documentary myself. I'm actually a writer. Okay. And so I had written my second book, which is a novel. Um, and I had a good friend of mine who was also into film. And she approached me and said, you know, I read your book and I'd like to do um, a, a film about your experience. Okay. Yeah, so it took some convincing because, you know, it was a personal experience I didn't know that I could, um, like, get into it that way. But, you know, she said it's very inspiring and she wanted to share it with the world and so we ended up doing it. And uh, how did you like it yourself? Well, I mean, we, I, I, I thought it was great, you know, I haven't really gotten into the meat of it because it's a continuing story. Okay. So, um, that's why this one is it's a short film, you know, we kept it very light with the shows. I think um, just a general experience of it, and I think that people can, uh, you know, watch it and, and, and get from it what you know they, they need to. Okay, so can you tell people who are watching you right now how you started and then what they can expect from you? How I started pedicabbing? Yes. Uh, well, I started pedicabbing. Briefly, briefly. Okay. So don't don't, don't disclose the secret. No, 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 of course not. I started pedicabbing because you know that was a means to survive and. Um, it just happened to be that the opportunity was presented where we could actually share my experience with people. So we decided to make a film. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what are you telling people now uh, for this film and this continuing group? How can they access it and how can they access you as well? Well, the film is currently on um, IndieFlix. So if you go to IndieFlix.com, you'll be able to watch it. And um, the, you can approach me um, by my website, danikashima.com. And um, yeah, so you can watch on IndieFlix. And of course, we're screening it today. And yes, it's available for everyone to see. Okay, so it's been a good experience for us to see how you did it. Yeah. And uh, congratulations in advance. Thank you so much. So, Thank which country are you from? I'm 
Angola. Angola. So you see this country, as uh, the vice president says, everybody's here and everybody's trying to do something. So congratulations and uh, get your support. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. It was, yeah. Okay. So as a filmmaker, you are here for this event. What does it mean to you? Well, my short well, film, is screening tonight. It's a film about an African immigrant maid who is struggling to move on with her life after the case against her assaulter is dismissed. And it meant a lot to me, actually, because the story is inspired by a woman named Nafisatu Jalo, who is actually based here, uh, and accused IMF head, he was then head of the IMF, Dominic Strauss-Kahn, of assaulting her. So it was actually inspired by a story set right here in New York. Very happy to screen it here uh, with the support of African Advisory Council here at the Hostel Center for Housing Culture. So, uh, how did you come up with this idea? What are you trying to put across this uh, film? Well, when the story hit the news, I was on leave from film school at NYU. I was in Lagos at the time. I'd been working on a memoir about my family. And I'd been traveling, interviewing people, writing. And then this story hit the news, and I was very inspired by a woman who dared to speak up when something really bad happened. And it was kind of this David and Goliath story, and if because of it I decided, oh, I want to make this short film. So I decided to go back to school, make the film, and graduate. Okay, <laughs> so you get the degree out of that Yes, show? well, yes, I have a master's in fine arts from NYU. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, so now, what do you tell to people who are watching you? Well, I want to say that all of us have an opportunity in life to speak up when things happen, when injustices happen. We have to take that responsibility on, no matter how difficult it might be. And if you have an opportunity as an artist, as a filmmaker, as a writer, as a singer, as a dancer, to portray a story of that nature, then use your art to speak up and use your art to have a message. And so I hope that anyone watching my film will know that I believe we are all capable of saving ourselves and of being the change we want to see in the world and being an example for people to do right. So this is what I want people to do. Being a part of change, not a part of problems. Exactly. Okay, thank you. And where are you from? I'm Nigerian. And based here in Brooklyn. Wonderful. You see, more and more Africans are hands on it. So keep being good. Thank you. Thank you. Bon, une promoteuse ou actrice d'un film. Alors, c'est Madame, Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle Roseline. Mademoiselle Roseline, qu'est-ce qui vous amène ici aujourd'hui? Um, je suis là pour mon film qui s'appelle Drum of Roses, um, que moi-même j'ai produit et que je suis actrice dans le film. Okay. De quoi il s'agit dans ce film oh, C'est un film d'amour. Une, une jeune fille africaine qui est amoureuse d'un jeune homme. Qui, ça s'est passé ici à New York. Le film se, se passe à New York. Okay. Ce film se passe à New York euh, dans quel bourg euh, Manhattan. Manhattan. <rire> Alors, vous pouvez donner un peu, euh, euh... en général, de quoi vous parlez de cet amour Est-ce que c'est est une éducation ou seulement un amour euh, Oui, ouais, ça passe d'une jeune fille qui est amoureuse d'un jeune homme qui vient toujours dans son, so son store pour acheter de la nourriture. Et elle aime le jeune, mais le jeune ne semble pas avoir des mêmes sentiments. C'est ça. Ouais. Donc, euh, je ne vais pas tout expliquer l'histoire, mais c'est... Ok, so let us talk most about this. So, is this film in English or French? Uh, it's in English. In English. Yeah. So, now, for English-speaking people, what's all about? about uh, for english speak the, the movie is about a young girl who's in love with a young guy who comes to her store every morning. But the guy doesn't notice her, and she she has a big crush on him. Okay. Yeah, I can't give it away, but okay. You know. So you want to keep it, uh, keep secret, it secret so that uh, people can buy the movie. Uh -huh. So is there uh, is that uh, movie out so that people can buy it or? No, it's not actually out. But you know, people can check me out on my Facebook. Okay, which one? On my website, um, they can go to www.rosechic.ro. Z e c h i k dot com. Okay. That's my website and also my Facebook. R o z e c h i k. Okay. So how many people are in that movie? Oh, the all Africans or you mix with some uh, uh, Americans? No, I'm the only African in the movie. Although it's an African movie, but I'm the only African, and the rest there's actually three people in the whole movie. Okay. So what are you saying to Africans who are listening to you right now about your movie? Talk to them. Um, well, it's a very good movie. It's, uh, you know, you're gonna love it. It's a love movie with a good twist to it. 
So check it out and uh, I'm actually happy to be here today, so I'm very excited. Okay, get excited and I'll give the title of the movie once more. It's Drum of Roses, the, the title of the movie. Okay, thank you. Just so uh, wish to see that movie out and they shall buy it to give, to give you our support. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I'm Elise Messina, I'm the Vice Chair of the African Advisory Council. I'm speaking here on behalf of my chairman that we're missing today is out of the country, Charles Cooper. And I'm gonna actually salute the team, the Art and Culture Committee, who put this together. Uh, the chair, Mr. Richard Yasser, Richard, please stand up. the one that introduced me to the council. Thank you, Chris. And um, very much with the growth of the African population in the Bronx, it's also reflected in the uh, growing African uh, population in the school of students. And uh, I believe it's almost 20%, which is amazing. And it seems to be growing uh, continuously. And one thing that's amazing is the math and science skills of the African students is so high. It's raised the class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but um, anyway, with that reflection, we want to do more African programming here at the center, and we're planning to uh, have a musical event sometime, hopefully in mid-April, 
that's going to sort of complement the Brock's Africa exhibit, which is going to be at the Longwood Art Gallery in Hostos, which is just across the way from the atrium. And that's being programmed by the Bronx Council on the Arts, and they have lots of public programs, and there's going to be lots of different artists participating in that event. So I hope you'll uh, check that out. You can find that out on our website at hostoscenter.org. And also, if you're not on our mailing list, and we'd love to tell you more about that April concert, make sure that you sign up on our mailing list if you haven't already done so uh, when you leave the theater tonight. Anyway. Thank you so much for being here. We're very excited about this event and hope it's the uh, first of many collaborations. So. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, Hafford, we, I would like personally to thank uh, Felix uh, Oracho, who you know, has been very helpful in actually making this happen. So without further ado, I'm gonna call someone who actually needs to introduce you the first movie. Hey, I thought that was right. Okay, so I'm there. Hey, all right. So this this movie has some adult content that is not suitable for children under 13. We're just letting you know, so you're not you're not gonna be surprised. Okay. Okay. All right. Isis story is a film about a Guinean immigrant housekeeper involved in an internationally covered DSK trial of 2011. It was a regional semifinalist in the 2013 Student Academy Awards. Equal B. Asian, the writer, producer, director of Isis Story, is a Nigerian American writer and filmmaker who attended Stanford University and recently earned an MFA in film from NYU. Ms. Asian received a Hedgebrook Writer's Residency for her debut novel, Alligator Legs. She is currently adapting Isis Story into a feature film while writing a memoir titled Elizabeth's Daughter. And now, we present Isis Story. Yes. We can talk about it, appreciate it. Okay, so we saw the first film, Isis Story, right? Now, we're gonna see another film, so let me read you what they gave me to read you for this evening. I thought that's right. Okay. A female pedicab driver is the subject of the untold story of one of Manhattan's diehard hustlers. The documentary, The Ultimate New York Hustle, is one of the most exhilarating true stories ever told. Ndali Kashume, originally from Angola, is the subject of the film. She is a transformational author, educator, and speaker. Ms. Kashume is also the CEO of Ndali House Publishers and the founder slash director of Speaking Wombs, a movement advocating for transformational leadership. Redefine Our Existence and God Summons Gabriel to New York City are two of the author's recent works. Now, sit back and enjoy the ride that is the ultimate. Overseas is about a woman who knows nothing of her birthplace until she learns that culture is difficult to escape, even overseas. What? The film was shot on location in parts of Nigeria and features Nollywood superstar Patience Ozakwar, I'm sorry if I jacked it up, I'm sorry, um, known worldwide as Mama G. Producer and actor Linda Obasi is originally from Nigeria and studied film at Cornell University before entering an acting MFA from DePaul. She is the founder and CEO of NE Cinema and author of the Fufu Diet, Food Evolution, which explores popular West African cuisine and healthy alternative ingredients to traditional foods. And now, we present her first feature film, Overseas. Now we keep uh, talking to people attending this event. Uh, now we've got uh, Mori, who's uh, the vice chair elect. Elect, and uh, <laughs> he was playing a very important role before, which is. Uh, well, I was the liaison, the community liaison, liaison of the liaison. African Advisory Council. Okay. So now, uh, can you talk to us? Okay. So, uh, Maury, so we are happy to have you in this in today's event. So, so, can you tell us exactly what is going on today? Well, today is the first annual. Africa, African Advisory Council Cinema Day. It's basically to highlight the African uh, African movies, to 
show them and uh, make sure that people appreciate them, make sure that they're here. You know, and uh, this is the small thing that we can do for the community, basically. But when you say it's a first uh, annual event, so and uh, for African, you mean African are booming now in this area, or you are just have to promote it to let them come in? The Bronx is very vibrant. You know, the Bronx is the largest place that you can find African in the you know one of the one of those places in New York, That's right. where you know you, you find the you know the largest African the concentration of uh, African community. Yeah. So you know it's the, you know, we just here yeah, you know just to let people know that our culture is beautiful. It's the, the movie industry in Africa is booming. So this is uh, one way for the African Advisory Council you know to basically. Exactly. So you are saying Afri uh, movie is booming in Africa. Oh, yes. So you don't want to be left out in America, Definitely right? As Africa. Definitely. Okay, we want to so, make we want to make our mark. So so far, how many uh, groups or so my, uh, how many actors or I don't know people call them you have uh, registered the organized because you are, the people are connecting them to this organization. Exactly. Well, there was a, they, they, there was a, they, there has been a lot of submissions. One, two of my favorites is uh, the one that Ndali made, uh, and uh, I think that's a, it. Was a beautiful story where she's had you know riding the pedicab across New York. That's a beautiful story. There's another movie called Drums of Roses by uh, the, uh, the chief editor of Tam Tam. You know she she does a great job. So it's a love story, and uh, you know you know that's those are one of my personal favorites. Basically. So it's nice to bring people in Definitely. to buy maybe whatever's going on, but. Uh, how can they how can they access these movies or access to these people who are promoting them and the actors? I mean, uh, the, the the movies are available on, on CDs. You can see the actors around. You know, you can ask them if you want to see the movies. I think some of them are also available online on YouTube. Okay. And uh, you know, the, the movies are everywhere, basically. So. Okay. So now let us talk about the SEC coming forward as a vice president elect. What do you tell people who are listening to you? I want to say the, vibe, the Bronx is vibrant. We're here to stay from the uh, from the soccer tournament to now the movie, uh, the, the movie, uh, cinema, uh, cinema day. The, the idea actually came from Ambrose. Ambrose is the one who was the first to actually propose an idea, and then I, I personally pushed it forward on the on the board on the Arts and Cultural Committee, and then uh, Richard actually finished the job. So, so that it means it's a very strong teamwork. Definitely. Okay. So now. So shout out to Ambrose. This is your idea in action. Okay. So <laughs> now we are in action for you, Ambrose. Where are you? Come and talk to people. So um, we are talking now to the the top of organizers, Sir Richard. So nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you again. And uh, I heard you are the hope of this event today. So can you tell people what it means and what's the uh, meaning of this event. Okay, uh, like he said, my name is Richard Iyasere. I am the uh, the chair of the African Culture Committee, uh, so the African organization for uh, African Advisory Council under the uh, President Office. Um, we put this uh, event together uh, because um, we come to realize that uh, a lot of Africans here in the Bronx never had the opportunity to watch or see a African movie in a big screen in the theater and watching it with their dad, friends and family and outsider and uh, with strangers. Like talking about over 100 people watching it in the African movie together at the party center. Uh, I don't think it ever happened before. Uh, so we just the same thing we did with the soccer to unite Africans here by soccer tournament, we use it also to put everybody together. The soccer was a lot of men, a lot of men that the, the women were not really involved in that But when it comes to African movie, a lot of women get involved, a lot of women that uh, can be made. So we said, okay, let's do this and see how it's going to turn out. So the, 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 the main thing here is uh, by unity. Us coming together, uh, having fun together, appreciating our own work together. But this is actually uh, uh, movies that are made by young Africans that I, I can categorically say that 100% uh, of all the movies we're going to show today were made by 
by Africans that live in the Bronx. In, yeah. or so, in New York in general? In New York in general, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah. uh, really for people who are watching you, they want to know how these Africans came together because it's very hard to see African being together themselves and what they are doing. So can you tell them exactly how you organize yourself to bring them together so that you become powerful and stronger? Uh, uh, first of all, because of time uh, factor, uh, African Advisory Council was put together by the borough president. Uh, we hold our meeting every first Thursday of the month at the borough president office. I will invite everyone out there, every African that you know, live in New York or tri-state area, to come to this meeting and you will hear more information on how uh, we try to build this uh, Okay, Richard, so the time is pressing. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank we have time to talk more. Okay, thank you. So you guys are listening to us. Thank you.